welcome to the video number 7 in the 30 days of Databricks series. In this video, we will go through the Databricks utilities. What is Databricks utilities? Databricks utilities or simply DB utils make it easy to perform powerful combinations of tasks. Right? I'm not going to go through all the details here, but the link will be in the description. Please go through the link. But let me quickly jump into the Databricks UI. Here is Databricks Utilities. I have already started my cluster and attached that cluster to this particular notebook. That is what you need to do before running something in the notebooks, right? If you are confused and if you are just landing into this video, uh, I recommend you to watch my previous videos where I have explained all the things step by step, how to create the cluster, how to attach that into the notebook, how to create the notebook and all the different things, right? Now let's go through this notebook. As I said you before, Databricks DB Utils, right? Databricks Utilities provides a convenient command line style tool for easy data and file manipulation within the Databricks notebook, right? So as the link which I just mentioned before is also here. And as I showed you before also, if you just want to run something, you can run DB Utils, but it says here it is packaged, but you need to type the help, right? You can just go here and type help. This module provides various utilities. I'm not going to go through all of these in this video, but I will explain some of these in my upcoming videos also. But in this video, we will be exploring some of the commands related to FS. And again, how to get help? So you can type dbutils dot and any of these things here or utilities, let's say like that. So if you run this one, then it will show us all the different things again, right? The next video will be about Databricks dbutils widgets, how we can use widgets in Databricks notebooks, right? And if you want to go with the notebook, you can just type notebook dot help. And as I mentioned here again also, there will be a video about running different notebook from existing one. There are some data sets already being provided by Databricks. You can just use the DB utils in order to show what are the different things. As you can see here, it is provided here. And this is in the text format. If we want to format that into the tabular format, you can pass the display in front of this particular command. So if I run this, by the way, I'm type being shift enter in order to run the cells you can even run from here run cell run all above run all below and if you just want to run this and keep it on that particular cell you can run control enter the cursor is still on that particular cell if you want to take it to the next one you need to type shift enter and as you can see the cursor moves from here to the next one right so yeah we know that there are many data sets here instead of dvutils.fs there is another way how you can use that so that is percentage fs that is the magic command right in order to achieve the same thing that i just showed you here if you run this command percentage fs ls and then the dbfs databricks data sets right this one not that one if you see the same thing that we get from this earlier command is being provided here, but that is in the tabular format, right? And if you want to see what is inside that, right? As you can see here, there is Databricks datasets and there is the path for different datasets. But if you see there is slash on the end, it means that that's the folder or directory. There are something inside that also. For example, what I did here, is if I go a little bit down, there must be something related to flights. Let's see. Okay, here, as you can see, a DBFS Databricks data says flights, meaning that there are data sets related to flights. For that, what I can do is provide these flights. And if I run shift enter, it will show me the contents inside that. And if I want to read this particular CSP, then I can read this particular CSP. There is also the text file and you can see that the one thing that you need to notice is there are folders here right if there are the folders then the size and modification time is not shown here but if there is some files then it shows here okay 
name and size what is the size of that and what is the modification time right now let's go with some examples with fs i will just run this fs dot help so it will show you all the different things and one thing that you need to be careful here is if you read this part here the percentage fs shorthand maps straight forwardly in onto the db utils calls right that's what i showed you just before running the fs command so db utils maps with the percentage fs so you can use anyway i will be going through these following commands in this particular video to explain you how things work right just to show you what i'm going to go through here if i go to the data tab here and if i go to dvfs by the way you might not see this dvfs if you are just landing in this video i have explained you how to enable this in my previous one please refer to that if i click this dvfs here we have file store and there is the users folder and this is the root dbfs what will happen just let's see here i said here dbutils.fs.mkdires test if i run this particular thing it says true meaning that it created a folder called test in the root folder right if we go to the data dbfs now you can see there is the test folder being created the same thing we can achieve with percentage fs just to show you percentage fs mkdires but as you can see the syntax is little bit different and we can just provide percentage fs mkdires slash sudarshan if i just run this it will create a folder called sudarshan if you go to data if you go to dvfs here you can see there is a folder called sudarshan right that is how the mkdires work now what is copy you know that copy is copying from one folder to the another folder if you go to this data again inside tables inside file store there is the tables here is some data set i want to copy this to some other location what i am doing here is dbutils.fs.cp copy from this particular location from tables movie statistic data set i want to copy that to file store temp movie statistics data set meaning that it is going to create a folder called temp and copy that into there if i run this particular thing by the way before i show you there i will run the same command here with percentage fs but into different directory right here i copied the same thing into temp folder here i'm copying that to the temp one right let me run this also so that what you must be seeing here is inside this data there should be inside the file store as you can see here there should be two folders temp and temp one consisting the movie statistics data set if i go here i go to dbfs i go to file store if i go to file store right click this one as you can see there is tables from tables i took this particular data set and then copy that into the temp and temp one if i go to temp there is one data set that is being copied if i go to temp one there is another data set the same data set but in the different folder right so that is how the cp command works now if i want to list all the things i can just use the percentage fs alias and then provide the path right if i run this it will show us the particular thing so as you can see there is movie statistics data set if you do this temp also it will show us the same because we co copied in that particular folder also right now what we can do is head if you go up here it will show you that what is what is head returns of the first max byte types to the given file right so what it will do is if i go here and run head and pass that particular location it will provide the head as this is the csp file it is showing in this format it depends what kind of files you have right but it displays the head and now if you want to put something meaning that there is a command called put right here you can type dbf db utils fs dot put and it has two arguments i provided where to write something right i want to put something into this particular file 
inside this particular folder. And what do I want to put it there? Hello Databricks. If I run this, once I run this, it will be clear for you. It says here DB Utils FS, it says true, meaning that inside temp1, there should be temp.txt file. Just to show you, I can run this cell again here. Now it's it will okay. This is temp one. Okay, temp one. So what I can do, or I can just copy this, so that it is just below that, right? So what I can do here is Control V, and if I run temp one, it should show us two files, right? One is there in before also, and this is the one that we just copied here. What is inside that? You can just run fs head and you can view that right if i run this it will show us hello databricks so we put something inside the file and then we display that file yeah that is the command here as you can see so that is the two files and there is the move command there is copy and there is put there is move what does move means we move from one location to another location so we can use percentage fs that is quite convenient instead of typing fs dbutils.fs so here is percentage fs mv is the move command and i want to move temp1 this is temp1 as you can see here temp.txt into different location i want to create a backup folder and then right there right if i run this it says true in order to see if it is there or not what you can do is you can already do from the notebook or if you go to the data and if you go dbfs right and then you can see there is the backup being created inside the file store if i click backup this is the location inside backup there is temp.txt that is how we moved the file meaning that we moved from temp1 temp txt so if i run this particular command again control c let me do it down here so you know the idea control v and if i run this then there should be only one file now right before we had two files we copied into different location and now we have just one file and if you want to list something as i said you before also you can list all the different things what is inside there right there are backup folder there is shared uploads tables temp temp one and all the different things now how to remove this right we created we copied we moved and now we need to remove something there is the command rem so i want to remove something right i want to remove something from the backup file that i just created so there is a file called tm temp txt that i just showed you right so if i go up here okay let me just show you here so it's clear so if i go here above i can just control v and then if i run here backup right so it should show us some file that is temp txt i want to remove this right so i can say fs remove and the file name so if i run this it will remove this and now if i just copy this right okay it's already down here but not here right so if i just do control v if i say ls so there is okay there is nothing because we just remove that particular file from there and if we go to the data just to verify that dvfs backup and we don't have anything inside it now let's say that we want to remove the whole folder can we do that let's run this yeah it's possible because there is no files inside the folder if there is something inside the folder we cannot delete the folder but if there is nothing inside the folder we can delete the folder right now if we go here there is no backup folder being created meaning that we just deleted this right but what if we want to delete the temp folder because if you go to the data dvfs inside the temp we have something here right let's try to delete that if we try to delete the temp folder let's see what happens here it throws some error for us if we scroll a little bit up here it says that okay remote exception occurred and you see here it is some locations that the databricks is being using it says directory is not empty as i said you before it needs to be empty before you delete it just to demonstrate that 
what I can do is I can provide dash r to delete that. What does dash r mean? I have written here the rem dash r command is used to remove directories and their contents recursively. What does recursively means? It will delete all files and sub directories within the specified directory. Now if I run this with dash r it says boolean true that means it's deleted. So there shouldn't be a temp folder. If I go to data if I go to DVFS, inside file store, there is no temp folder. That is how you can delete. Okay, so that's all for this video. It went a little bit longer, but I think it makes sense to explain you about this FS because that's mainly used in order to manipulate the files from one location to another. Other commands, as I said you before, next one will be about widgets and then notebooks. And depending upon the use case, we will be using these commands in our notebooks as we move forward. I hope you learned something new today. If you are new around here, please subscribe. That helps me motivate to create new content also and provide feedback and have an active conversation in the comments section in the video. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.